Alright, hi guys. We're going to go over some pretty common um, X resources um, topics a little bit. We're going to talk about how to set fonts. For um, this terminal in specific, we're going to use um, RxVT Unicode. But we're going to talk a little bit. It also works well with Xterm. Uh, I believe it's actually UXterm is the Unicode one. Is that correct, Irish? I don't use uh, Xterm. Yeah, I believe, it, I believe that's correct. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about how to set fonts in your terminal, how to change colors, how to do a few fancy things like have clickable links in the terminal, um, and hopefully it's hopefully it's something that's beneficial to people. Uh, Iris, do you do you have have you had a, a little bit of experience setting up terminal um, configurations, or do you think that um, yeah? I have some experience. It's not as extensive as some people. Uh, what I like to do is just get like a general base from someone else's uh, like uh, config file, and then I just like to tweak it uh, to what I like. Yeah, I can definitely attest to that too. Uh, I find that um, I do most of my work in the terminal. So I like having a nice clean font. I like having color themes that I can match with a GTK theme as well as other things. And maybe we'll get into editing a GTK theme in one of our later videos. But for now, let's jump in. Um, so in this case, we're going to look through this file that you see on the screen here. And we're going to talk a little about how to set. As you can see, there's some lines. If you have X term, you might change this to U X term instead of U R X V T or the star. But as you can see here, you can set the font. Um, you can set to this. This font uses um, Droid Sans Mono for Powerline, which is the font you see here. It's nice and clean. I actually use it because of the Powerline symbols. Since I have a Tmux session running in Vim Airline, it's nice to nice to have those symbols. But as you can see, you can set um, the size as well at the end there. And that's typically the format you're going to want to use when you're setting fonts. You can set bold and regular fonts as well. As you can see, there's letter space down below here. And I'll just highlight that for you, that line. So letter space is the space between um, different characters. So when you're using things like power line symbols, I don't know, have you used power line at all, Irish? I use Powerline in my Vim configuration, but uh, I've unable to uh, get it going in my RxVT Unicode uh, config. Okay, so one thing I noticed was that default, the letter space is set to 1, which puts one little pixel in between each character. So when it came to Powerline symbols, there was a little gap which is why I personally set mine to zero, as you can see here. Also, if you're going to use bold fonts as well as regular fonts, make sure, and then I'm going to highlight this, you set URXVT, allow bold to true. There's a lot of things that I have in this uh, file that are commented out. So as you can see, in order to kind of organize it, I have URXVT fonts commented out and you can set up your config file to be as readable or as, as uh, unreadable as you so fit or as you see fit. Um, right now we're going to look at this um, couple of things, Perl XT, X, EXT common URL launcher and matcher button. So you can copy and paste and I can actually put a link to this uh, this config file so you can grab it and edit it as you see fit. But what these three lines are going to do is if you have, I believe it's xdg-utils, is, is the Arch package anyway, so it could be different on your distro of choice. But you can actually set it up to have clickable links in the terminal. So if you're using something like WeChat and somebody links something, you don't have to cut and paste the link. You can just click it and open it in your favorite web browser. And xdg um, utils, you can actually set the default browser. Um, but yeah, I feel like I feel like that um, that feature is actually really really helpful to have to be able to open links. To be able to open links from within the terminal is is a lot nicer than trying to copy paste stuff all the time.
especially for me because I use tmux a lot, so copy and paste out of the terminal gets to be a little bit of a pain in the butt with tmux. So I really appreciate having the ability to just open links. So one thing I actually had to get used to when I switched to URXVT was how to copy paste because I, I was unaware that you click shift and then you highlight it and then that automatically goes into your clipboard and then to paste it you just have to do shift insert and then that that just threw me off for some reason. Did you have any issues? So um, this is one of the things I was mentioning. When I use Tmux, I can't um, highlight and then click Shift, Insert to copy, and then Control, Insert to paste, because Tmux likes to be uh, a little difficult about that sort of a feature. So for things like WeChat, I usually run it outside of a Tmux session so that I can easily, as you just said, highlight and cut and paste. But I think that, um, yeah, that's one of the lesser known things that, that I, I run into where a lot of people don't know how to copy and paste out of the terminal. And yeah, I think that being able to, to put things in the clipboard, we will actually have another point at some video. I'll talk about how to set up your clipboards to sync between the GTK clipboard or the QT clipboard and the, and the terminal clipboards. Because I think that's really worth, worth, worth looking into. Yeah, it de definitely because it can throw your clipboard's awful loop because I, I remember trying to copy one thing and then paste it in my uh, terminal or WeChat and it was something else. I'm like, no, that's not what I wanted to paste. So definitely yeah. having definitely having your clipboard synced is very beneficial. So for this one, I want to pardon the language in my um, X defaults. You can easily disable the bell that the the beeping that happens in a in a terminal with a urxvt dot insecure, and then set that to false, and that will disable the bell. So again, pasting shortcuts. Um, you can you can there's a setting here for with, like with the with the with the tmux session to cut and paste as well. So that. That that way, that's a pearl binding as well, and that this way I can set it to the mod key C or mod key V to cut and paste if I'm in a Tmux session um, instead of having to use, as you were mentioning before, to um, shift and control insert. Some things I like. I don't know how you look at it, Irish, but when I'm in a URXVT session, I don't always like to have the scroll bar on the side. I. When I first switched over to URXVT, I had to have the scroll bar because, again, I wasn't used to, uh, you know, doing the page up or page down button. So I implemented the scroll bar by having URXVT star scroll bar on my right equals to be true. But right now I have it as false because I'm... Because I'm on, because I'm able to scroll up and down now. Yeah, one thing I like to have with these different scroll bar and cursor style options is I like to have um, how many lines it saves. Yeah, that that that, that definitely is, especially if you're on a, uh, you know, an IRC channel and you need to know what that person said like a few minutes ago. It's very nice that it saves there and even. Uh, what you just typed maybe 10 minutes ago, instead of going into your bash history, you can just scroll up. I'm like, okay, that's what it is, and then do it again. Yeah, I'm speaking a little different from the WeChat logs because with, like, at least from my experience, I don't know about other clients, but I know that with WeChat, um, the WeChat log of scrolling up is going to be a little bit different than the URXVT logs. Whereas URXVT, if I'm, if I'm, let's say I'm installing a bunch of software, and only saves, let's, I only kept it at saving, let's say, 100 lines, but I just installed 200 packages, and now I want to look up and see that everything downloaded correctly and installed. If I, if I only have a short history list, then it's not going to save that many lines up, and when I scroll up the window, it'll actually cut off at some point. So um, setting your save lines uh, line, which I'll highlight again, is a great is a great tool to have, and as you mentioned, you have you had scroll bar set to true. I as well had that to false now, 
cursor blink. I like my cursor blinking so I can see it better. I can set that to true. I set my cursor line, my cursor to be an underlined instead of a character. And then you can actually set the color. Um, with this, and, and I have this organized in this kind of a setup just to keep it clean. Yeah, you know, with the underscore blinking, it reminds me of the old uh, computers back from our childhood, like the old uh, Apples, you know, just or even MS DOS. This is where I this is where I have a lot of fun because one thing I like to do is when I change my theme and my GTK theme, I'll I'll revamp my whole color theme in the terminal and then alter my my MOC theme or my Ranger theme or you know my WeChat theme just to match whatever GTK mess I've created. And so today we'll give you a little bit of a, a buffer on how to set up some colors some colors in the terminal. Irish, have you have you played around with the terminal colors much? I have not. I usually the person's base uh, URXVT config. I just usually use their terminal colors because I do not understand the uh, color zero, the color eight, and all that jazz. So I'm just going to leave this one up to you. All right. Well, I have a great way to break this down, but one of the nice things you can do for starters without is you can use star background, and that'll change the background of the terminal. Star foreground will change the default. So if I open a new terminal, the default foreground color is going to be the, the what that I can actually set. Um, and that's great because then you can set up your prompt, but then whatever you type into your terminal will be a specific color, and you don't have to worry about these other things. So to break down colors a little bit, there are 16 colors. There's two for black, two for red, green, yellow, blue, etc. And we'll go over them all a little bit. And each one, there's a bold and a normal. So in this case, if you want, we're talking about black. Color zero is going to be your normal black color. Color eight is going to be your bold black color. And then it works down. One and nine are red. Two and ten are green. And I'll scroll down a little bit so users who are watching this video can see. But you can set each and every one in hex colors. And that way, I try to organize it the way you see here, where I keep black. And then underneath, I have color 0, color 8, red, color 1, color 9. That way, I stay organized. And I'm not having to remember which is which. And to me, that's, that's really helpful, is keeping it legible. Because when you're, when you're changing all these, if you don't have it clear, it's really hard to take a look at what you're changing. That's one thing I would definitely even pass along to you, Ryrish, is after this video, when you get a chance to look, feel free, because you can always use comments in these, in these default files to organize your colors in a way that's readable for you. And that may be different than how it is for me. I do. Uh, you did mention the background. Uh, the one thing I definitely do, because I do... Uh, work in a uh, tiling environment, and I also have wallpaper. Is I like to tr make my URXVT transparent so I can actually enjoy the wallpaper that I'm on. So you can set it from like fully black or whatever your background color is to fully like transparent where you can barely see the text. So uh, that's one of my biggest things that I like to play around with is where my the middle ground is for my transparency. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't actually have transparency set up in this default file because I personally don't use transparencies on this machine. However, on my laptop, I have it set up to use, transpar to use transparencies. One of the great things about URXVT, and this doesn't apply to all terminals, which is one reason we probably won't cover it tonight, but um, with URXVT, you can set up you can set up a native transparency and true transparency, which are two very different things. But actually, if you were interested and you're using URXVT and you want to take a look at transparency, I would recommend taking a look at the Arch Wiki because there's a lot of information on there about how to configure uh, URXVT in a default file so that you can have transparency. Yeah, plus there's different ways. You can use Compton. You can use another program that... Uh, deals with the transparency, but definitely, even if you're on Ubuntu or 
Gen 2 or whatever, the Arch Wiki is definitely a nice resource to have. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of information there. And the other thing too, like you were saying, is there's so many ways to gain transparency. You can do it with Compton. Uh, certain window managers like Awesome Window Manager and Xmonad have transparency within the window manager, which is really cool because then you can do things with Ranger, like actually have the images that you're previewing. And well, while the terminal's transparent, the image is not. But when you use something like Awesome and use its native transparency for terminals, you can actually also get the image to have some transparency, which is a really cool feature. But this was just a, a nice brief uh, uh, overview of UrxVT. I suggest if you're you know wanting to get away from you know GNOME terminal or Mate terminal or whatever terminal that you're using, I definitely. Uh, recommend that you give this a shot because you can customize the heck out of this thing and you know that's what uh, Linux is for is you can configure just about anything in your system yeah and also a lot of these little commands some of them are specific to RxVT Unicode some of them are going to be specific to Lexterm and some of them like the colors I think would are easily set up similarly with both terminals and there's other terminals that may also be able to share a file like this for some defaults. So definitely take a look, do your homework on your terminal, figure out what you want the machine to do. And if these are if these are helpful, then definitely definitely take a look. And I can we can actually paste a link to a a sample config into the into the show notes or into the, the description.